Hello everyone, welcome into my craft space. It's Shauna and today I have my handy little sidekick over here if you can see her. She is eating a bone so hopefully she will stay happy for at least a little while while we get some work done. Oh sorry, let's get this focused back here. And today I am working on some fun things for the um, steampunk journal that I've been working on. I want to make a little dangle that's going to go uh, probably here or maybe here. I think actually here. I'm um, going to be a little different and let it dangle down the side. So I found these Daisy D's uh, chipboard little keychain like things in my stash and I just thought it would be fun to use them. So um, being the mixed media lover that I am, I thought we would do something fun and use some foil sheets from the kitchen. Now Ranger does make these in like uh, sheets that are sticky backed and that's really awesome. Um, I'm, I just recently got some and I don't know what I did with them. So I thought it'd be fun to play with some foil anyways and we'll give that a try. It is pretty thin. Uh, the foil that I got is Reynolds Wrap. It's just the individual sheets from the dollar store. You get like 25 in a packet. I think they're uh, 14 inches by 10 and a quarter inches. So, um, and they do have this thing that says Reynolds wrap kind of etched in them. So um, you just have to plan it out right if uh, you plan to use that. And um, I've already done one thing with it. I ran it through my embossing folder. This is a 3D embossing folder that's Tim Holtz. And as you can see, it does make a really cool impression here. I had it like this together. So I have one that's um, the puppy side is up this way and the other one the puppy side is up this way. So this would make some really cool tags and um, we're gonna play with it today. Uh, uh, maybe we'll use a little bit of that, but I'm gonna use it plain too and just see how it goes. So I've got some Distress Collage Medium and I've got a bunch of little bits and bobs. I, some of these are from Graphic 45 Paper Collection, the steampunk debutante that I've been working with for this altered book. Some of these are die cuts. Uh, this is the Gears die from Tim Holtz. Um, this is little pieces. Sometimes when I have scraps from doing die cuts of other things, I'll just keep running it back through and I'll get little broken bits like this or like this. And, um, I do use those, so we're gonna work on it today and you'll see how it comes in handy. And then I also have some um, Distress Embossing Glaze. I'm gonna play with that a little bit today too. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna put some collage medium on this chipboard. And then we'll put down these broken bits of gears. So I've got one piece here. And then I think I want this other piece right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let's zoom in just a little bit better. I think. There we go. Okay this one down in the corner over here. Okay, and so you can see these little broken bits just fit really nicely um, when you're trying to collage them. So now I'm gonna put some more of this over here and sorry for any noise in the background. Puppy's bone is now gone and she is on the move getting into things, which is no good. Mommy, no. Hopefully she will just settle on her little blanket and be okay. Okay, so now that I have some collage medium on here, I've got my gears on here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this plain foil sheet and press it on there. Um, 
I'm going to tear it because we just need just a little piece. And this part of it up here is plain and does not have the Reynolds wrap little impression, so that's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and press it down here. And what I'm hoping will happen is that we'll be able to see the gears over it. Now we could do the same thing on the back if we wanted to. So just save a little piece of this. And cut it off. Okay, so we'll set that aside. Then I'm just going to press this with my finger. And as you can hopefully see, that gear is finding its way to the top. Since we put collage medium down, it will hopefully just hold it there. And there we go. So let's see. I'm just going to work on this one side for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and tear that off. Um, I want to make sure I don't lose the hole because I want to be able to put that chain back through. So we'll just poke it through like that. And now I think we can use a bone folder, but we want to be really gentle because foil is thin. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap these back behind. And then, um, so that's pretty cool. You can see the, the gear right through. Looks like it's metal. Now we're going to use some of this uh, Finnebar brass paste. And we'll put a little bit of that on. Once I find the right brush, there we go. And turn this silver some different colors. And hopefully it'll bring this gear back out just a little bit more even. And we could have left it silver if we like that. Uh, most of my book is done in like a brass or bronze. Um, so I'm kind of hoping to tone the silver down just a touch. This would be fun to put some uh, other mediums on as well. You could put like, um, you know, inks or whatever you have, different paints. We could of course have rubbed some uh, ink in there. So I've got a little bit of this uh, walnut and ink and vintage photo ink. Okay, sorry about that. I had to take a little intermission, let the dog out hopefully distract her a little bit. So now, which also gave our little piece here a little time to dry. So um, it just looks like this now. I'm gonna go ahead and gently rub this walnut stain ink over it and see if we can bring out uh, the definitions of this gears just a little bit more. I think I really like that. Kinda does look like a copper color now almost. We could have put this ink on before we put the, the paste on as well. And that might have given it a different look. And so you can see on the gears of this 
uh, front cover, I do have some of the patina type uh, paint going on and that's kind of my colors throughout the book. So I'm going to try and add just a little bit of that. And really no harm or foul here because if we don't like it, we can just peel this foil off and start again. Okay, just get a little bit on here. And I'm just lightly rubbing it around the edges a little bit and kind of over the raised parts. Okay, actually really like what we've got going on here. So that's how it's looking right now. Not bad for just a piece of foil and some paper. Okay, I'm wiping out this brush. Put this lid back on here. Now, I also have this other die cut that I cut out. It's a, a Tim Holtz die cut. I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes. I cut it out of craft cardstock. It's the light bulb. And I thought this bottom piece would do really well. Wrapped in some foil. Let's see if we can get all of the edges to be defined even through the foil. I think it might be a little easier if I put some collage medium on there and then we'll just rub it around. because this is a flat edge. We'll put the flat edge to the flat edge of the foil. And then... Now I could have put the foil on the craft paper when I die cut it out and that probably would have given me an even better look. Um, but this was just kind of a little bit of an afterthought. What can I do with some foil? So I'll press this around with the bottom folder. Want to do it lightly or you'll tear this foil off. It's kind of like working with rice paper. Just get those creases back in there. So I did manage to get most of the definition of this piece of the bottom down here, which was great. And then I'm gonna go ahead and work with this other piece, uh, the light bulb. I think what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to put a little bit of gesso on the background of the light bulb because it's white gesso. And pieces here. Just put a little bit 
down these other pieces too. That way they'll take some ink a little better. Then, uh, once that is dry, I've got some crackle paste, and we'll give that a try too. And my intermission did not go well with the dog. She is back exploring around. Remy, get out of there. She is under my feet, getting into whatever she can find with her little puppy teeth. No. Over here. Place your toy. Okay. Let's see if we can make it through the rest of this video. So we've got this texture paste. Uh, it is from Prima. They're Finibear products. It's the texture paste here. Platinum Crackle. So I thought it would be neat to put this um, on the edges of this light bulb. too much but we're just going to keep going around. I'm going to try to preserve kind of the inside edge there so that's where those pieces are going to go. Maybe we'll put a little bit on this too. See if we can get some crackle action going on there. Okay. Waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna put a little bit of some walnut stain ink on this little piece here. So I'm down in the grooves in there. Okay. Now I'm going to use my heat gun on this and um, we'll see if it helps that crackle dry. Okay, so it's not fully dry yet and I still have some of the crackle paste that's wet kind of in these clumpy areas. I'm going to use a little bit of this um, Distress Embossing Glaze in the Speckled Egg color and just sprinkle it on the top and then we'll get that melted too and I think it's gonna look really nice and get a piece of paper to lay underneath here just a little piece of scratch paper So I'll just sprinkle just a little bit of this. Alright, so I'm kind of hoping that this will help it be a little more um, like of a glass look. We'll have to see. Alright, so close 
this up and heave it again. Okay, so everything is dry, and I've got this little makeup applicator that I like to use to ink sometimes. So I'm just gonna go along the edge. Got some extra bumps here that I will kind of scrub out just a little bit. Some of it's going to be covered uh, once we add the extra pieces on. I like that glaze, it just adds a little extra to the side here. I'm just going to go right over it too. And then this piece. I'm going to use some of this. What I like about these makeup applicators is they're two-sided, so I can do one color and then move, quickly move on to the next one. And I get some great color. Okay, and then I can use this other side and do some highlights. just add a little bit more once I've got it glued down. Be a little easier. Okay, I put that on the wrong one. I did. Okay, and now I've got ink all over me again. That's how you know I am crafting when I've got ink everywhere. All right, and I think on this little piece, I'm just gonna use some walnut stain. Get this nice and dark, and we'll just carry it on through like this. Eek. Makeup's fun, just a little bit dry, I think but it's making kind of a fun texture. So, good thing I'm almost done with this piece because this sponge has about had it. Okay. And I'll we'll just glue these together with some collage medium. Whatever I did with that brush. There it is. Okay. So this in here. Inside of the light bulb, and then we kind of want to twist do this on here. Let's do this first. There we go, that looks good. All right, I'll twist it up. And then we'll put some on the back of this piece too.
The light bulb is, uh, there's some light bulb pictures on this steampunk paper. And I think this will be a fun little decoration piece on one of the pages inside the book. So, and I really like the look of that foil on there. Just try and glue this down a little better. Some collage medium here. And then once that's all dry, I'll take some ink and go over the rest of it. Okay. I'll just set aside to dry. side of this one on here. This side, I just want it to be kind of where was that other piece? There's another piece that says graphic 45 and it's really cute. There it is. Uh, that one's much smaller though. So maybe we'll go back to this one. And I think I will put a little more foil on here. Just so we get that foiled edge all the way around. And there's the scissors. Collage medium and a little bit of glue, I think. I was so excited. You guys will be happy to know I filled my glue all as well. At least for a little while, anyways. <laughs> always punch an eyelet and put another but then I'll punch a hole on the other side eh, we'll just cut it okay and some glue then I gotta repoke that hole too I was super excited to get going on some of this ephemera for the steampunk book I'm making. I, I was really worried at first that I didn't have enough, and then once I punched out all of the tags and cut out pieces from the collection, I've got a whole little basket of goodies to work with, so it's going to be fine. However, I will say one thing that always impresses me when I do an altered book is how much paper it takes to fill the book. It really takes a lot. Okay. This 
hole punched back through. Oh, not that way. I still wanted this on here because it's graphic 45, so I'm going to walnut stain that one up just a little bit. So this is the one that has our gears. You could leave it like that if you want to. I'm gonna glue this little thing on right here. Actually, we'll make it go this way. And then you can still see the gear ends at the top there. And there was one little gear that I wanted to glue in the top corner. That one's a clock. That one's a gear. Okay, we'll put this one like this. this one here like this. And move that one back like that. All right, and then we can put our chain back on there. Now you can use your stain and inks um, on this chain too. Alcohol ink works really well on metal. I am just going to leave it as it is though. See if I can get it back together. There we go. And then I have this key charm somewhere. There it is. I will put on here too. There's a key on that side, so maybe we'll just put on this side. I really think this is cute and then the other side it's got some of that foil although I think I still might just take some more ink and kind of turn that foil down just a little bit a little bit loud there we go that looks better Okay, so chipboard and a little bit of foil can work wonders for a cute little dangle on the steampunk altered book. I think it looks really cute. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this guy is not quite done yet. I'm going to let it dry some more. Uh, it will make another appearance in the book. I'm going to go ahead and put some more inks and um, try and make it look a little more like a light bulb but I think it's doing really well so I hope you guys enjoyed this video learned something um, I didn't use this yet but I will I'm gonna probably put it on the background of one of the pages and uh, we'll go from there so it'll make another appearance in the book as well so thanks guys so much for tuning in and for subscribing I really appreciate all of my subscribers I hope you guys had fun and enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks so much for watching